Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be clearing up something following the video about installing the deep heat projector in my leopard gecko's tank. In hindsight maybe it would have been better to talk about the science behind the heater in that video but I know I'd briefly gone over that in a previous video when I was setting it up for my crested gecko but nonetheless I figured I'd explain everything in today's video. So one thing that came up was that people were concerned that my leopard gecko wouldn't get any belly heat like she does from a heat mat now that she has a deep heat projector so I kind of wanted to explain why this assumption isn't very accurate. Let's first look at the sun and the wavelengths it produces. Beyond visible light there's infrared A and B. These deliver photons deep within the skin and muscle tissue. These photons are basically packets of energy. All life on earth will be exposed to these wavelengths so they have a use for and a protection against them. Since ectotherms, which reptiles are, rely on heat to energise them, these wavelengths have a far greater effect, in a positive way, on them. Infrared C is almost like a byproduct of infrared A and B. Anything that is not used is released back off the terrain through convection. Infrared C is what makes us feel hot. So with all this in mind, how does this relate back to the deep heat projector? Well, essentially it does the same thing. It produces infrared A and B, which goes deep in the skin and muscles, energizes our reptiles, and anything that isn't used is released back as infrared C. So when I put my hand in here, I feel the warmth. And when I touch the slate and rocks, I feel the warmth. And we can measure that with a laser thermometer. So what does a heat mat and ceramic heat emitter produce? Well, they both produce infrared C, so the byproduct, the wavelengths that makes you feel hot. I completely understand why heat mats and ceramic heat emitters were made to just produce this wavelength. Reptiles need heat, infrared C is heat. Now, do they still work well? Sure, I think they definitely do their job, that's quite evident. However, a lot of people find that their leopard gecko, for example, will just stay in its hot hide. It won't move around its tank very much and it only comes out to go to the toilet or hunt. And that's what I found and this is why I wanted to try something else. You see, the energy produced by the deep heat projector is far more usable than that of a heat mat or ceramic heat emitter. Think of it like this, okay? So imagine the heat source is a phone charger and your gecko is the phone. So the deep heat projector will charge up your gecko far quicker and let's say the gecko's battery life will last a lot longer. So the gecko can charge up under the heater, then go about its day. It doesn't rely solely on the heater. It doesn't have to spend its entire day under it. Whereas, if you use a heat mount or ceramic heat emitter, it will take longer to charge up your gecko, and once your gecko moves away from that charger, the battery life, as it were, won't last as long, so it must spend more time under or on the heat source. So basically, the gecko requires shorter periods of basking from a bioavailable source, like the sun or a deep heat projector, in comparison to longer exposure to a less bioactive source, such as a heat mat or ceramic ceramic heat emitter. Essentially the deep heat projector creates its own kind of heat map. The rocks and slate of this cave are heated through convection and since they're dark rocks they will retain heat well and as I use a thermostat the temperature is set and they won't overheat. The deep heat projector makes its own heat map. So those concerned that there'll be no belly heat when I'm not using a heat map well, it's making its own, in the way that the sun would in the wild. And I can honestly say, and though my gecko hasn't used this for too long, it's been about two weeks now, I have never seen her have so much energy and explore her tank so much. And I'm not saying you have to switch. It's quite evident that a heat mat will certainly do the job. But if you are striving to create a more wild-like natural environment for your leopard gecko, then this is certainly the way forward. As I've always said, the reptile hobby is an ever-evolving hobby. The worst thing we can say is we're doing it this way because this is how we've always done it. This is an exciting time in our hobby where we are being provided with new information backed by evidence from reliable sources that allow us to improve our reptiles' lives in captivity. We have the knowledge, we have the tools, so maybe we should just actually give them a chance. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video and hopefully it hasn't been too confusing. To anyone wanting to further their knowledge on this subject as well as UV, LEDs, 
and so on, then I honestly couldn't recommend this book enough. This isn't an ad, it's not sponsored, it's genuinely a good book that has opened my eyes so much. I'll leave links below to where you can find the heater and possibly the book if you're outside the UK. I know a lot of people feel they can't actually get it where they are, but there's actually shops that do sell them in your country, so I will link them if you are wondering. I've also created a playlist about reptile heating and lighting so you can check that out if you like. I know if you go further back in my channel, I mean I've had this channel six years and a lot has changed in that time. Some of my older videos I was very much against UV and certain heating equipment. So what I wanted to do is take all the new relevant information and the like recent videos and put them in a playlist so if you want to just learn all the up-to-date information it will be there. But anyway if you haven't already feel free to subscribe I post every four days and as you can tell I'm pretty passionate about reptile keeping so if you like that kind of stuff click the subscribe button but thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Yeah.